Okay, today we are going over CC1 2.3.4 review and preview. Problem 86, look at the generic rectangle at right. What two numbers are being multiplied using this rectangle? How can you tell? Okay, so if I look at this, I don't have any of the numbers on the outside, so it's kind of, I can't tell immediately what's being multiplied together. However, if I look here at the 6, this is what I know about 6. I can multiply to 6 two ways. 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. Now, I'm not going to use 1 times 6 um, here necessarily. It doesn't look like I am because 6 doesn't go into 20. 1 does, but 6 doesn't go into 150 either. So that means that I, I can't use that number, okay? Now, I can use 2 and 3. Now, sometimes I might guess on which spot to put it, but I have this 2 here and a 15 here. Which number does 2 go into? If you thought that it was 20... You'd be correct. It does go into 150, but 15, not so much. So my two is gonna go up here. And then that means that my three is up here. Or oh, down here, okay? So once I know that, now I can just divide 20, 20 divided by two. is 10. So that means that 10 times 2 is 20, which is correct. 500 divided by 10, well that's 50. 50 times 10, 5 times 1 is 5, and then I put my two zeros. So my two numbers being multiplied are 52 and 13. I can tell because 6 is a product of 2 and 3. Once I figured out where those numbers were placed, I could use division to find the other parts. Okay, part B, write the product as the sum of the areas and find the answer. Make sure to circle your answer. Well, that's 500 plus 20 plus 150 plus 6. So, I'm going to start with 500. 500 plus 150 is 650. Plus 20 is 670. Plus 6 is 676. Now I could put them vertically to figure that out. I'm still gonna get the same answer. Okay, six plus zero is six, five plus two is seven, five plus one is six. Part C says to use the distributive property to write an equation showing that the product is equal to an expression with parentheses, multiplication, and addition. What this says, or what, what this is, is I'm going to write 13. That's one of my numbers. But I'm going to use the expanded form of 52. That's the distributive property. Okay, it tells me that I'm multiplying third, 13 by 50 and by 2. That equals 500 plus 20 
plus 150 plus 6, which then equals 676. Now, if I'm really being a stickler, we could write my 13. It's an expanded form in the um, generic rectangle. I could write them both in expanded form. That way I don't get as confused. Okay, number 87. In section 2.1, you learned how to create dot plots, bar graphs, histograms, and stem and leaf plots. Which of these representations would best display the data given below? Use that representation to display the data. Okay, these are boot sizes of the math marching team. The first thing I notice, my data is numerical which means it cannot be a bar graph or a Venn diagram. It's either going to be a dot plot, a histogram, or a stem and leaf plot. Okay. The next thing I notice is that the numbers are close together. Okay. And I have a lot of repeating numbers. That all leads to a dot plot. Okay, so my dot plot, again, if you remember, we use a number line. I have to use my smallest number and go all the way to my largest number. It looks like my smallest is 8 and my largest is 12, so I drew my number line a little bit too big. Um, but I'm going to go to 14 and go down to 6 because, my, again, my number line is too big. So for each one that I have, I'm going to put a dot above that number. So I'm going to start with 10, 8, 12, 10, 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10, 9, 11, 11, 12, 11, 10, 11, 8, 10, 12, and 8. Looks like 10 is the most popular shoe size or boot size for the math marching team. Okay, problem 88. I need to figure out well, what are, I need to fill in the number lines. They're counting by different numbers. So if I look at this first one, 20 to 24, well, it adds four. So if I subtract or add four to 12, I get 16. And 16 plus four is 20. That is how I know I am counting correctly. So 12 minus 4 is 8, 8 minus 4 is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. So when I have 10 to 60, I'm going to guess it's counting by 10s just from what I'm looking at. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, it does work. Okay, 13 to 41. I might have to guess. Right? I know it's not counting by tens. That would be too much. So, like, and one ends with three, one ends with one. So, maybe I guess, okay, maybe it's going by eight. I don't know. 13 plus eight is 21. 21 plus eight is 29. 29 plus eight is 35. 
35 plus 8 is not 41. It cannot be 8. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to go one down because I have to guess and check on this one. I don't know what it is without guessing and checking. So I started with 8. I'm going to guess 7. 13 plus 7 is 20. 20 plus 7 is 27. 27 plus 7 is 34. 34 plus 7 is 41. So it is counting by 7. So 13 minus 7 is 6. Okay, the next one is 15 to 35. It's not counting by 15s because 15 plus 15 would be 30. And I can't get there that way. So they both have fives. I'm going to guess fives. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Okay, problem 89. We need to complete the fraction on the right so that the fractions are equal. Be sure to show your work clearly. I'm going to zoom in on these on my home, on mine. Okay, so in order for them to be equal, I have to do the same thing to the numerator and denominator when I'm multiplying. So I know I'm multiplying, but 8 times what is 32? 8 times 4. So 3 times 4 is 12. My numerator would be 12. For part B, not only can I multiply, I can divide. 100 divided by 10 is 10. So then if I do the same thing to my numerator, 80 divided by 10 is 8. It's 8 tenths. For 1 half, 2 times a number is 250. Whatever I multiply 2 by, I also have to multiply 1 by. I can use division to help me. 250 divided by 2, 2 goes into 2 one time, drop my 5, 2 goes into 5 two times with 1 left over, drop my 0, 2 goes into 10 five times with no remainder, which means that I know it's 125, 1 times 125 is just 125. Okay, problem 90, we're adding and subtracting. Again, when we're adding and subtracting decimals, we need to make sure that the decimal place is, the decimal point is lined up. Remember 11, we can fill in the zeros. Okay, we are adding, so 5 plus 0 plus 0 is 5, 9 plus 3, 9, 10, 11, 12, 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11, plus another 1 is 12, and 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. The answer is 32 and 25 hundredths. Part B, I'm subtracting. When I subtract, I wrote that down wrong. Again, line up your decimal points. But when I subtract, especially, I like to fill in those zeros. Because I know 0 minus 5, I can't do. I can't borrow from 0. So I have to borrow 10 from my 2 tenths. And then I have to borrow from the hundredths. 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 7 is 2. 1 minus 3 I can't do. I have to borrow from my 1s. 11 minus 3 is 8. 8 minus 0 is 8. 8 and 825 thousandths. Part C, I'm adding again. Remember, I line up my decimal points. 5 plus 0 is 5, 7 plus 0 is 7, 
5 plus 2 is 7. 7 plus 0 is 7. 2 plus 0 is 2. 27 and 775 thousandths. Part D, I'm subtracting again. Remember, I'm lining up those decimals and I'm making sure I fill in the other parts with zeros, particularly for subtracting. I have to borrow all the way from my 9 in my 90, and then I have to borrow all the way across. 10 minus 3 is 7, 9 minus 0 is 9, 9 minus 9 is 0, 9 minus 0 is 9, 8 minus 0 is 8, it is 89 and 97 thousandths. As always, if you have any questions, 